What's going on, people? Welcome to Man Knows Football. You're here with myself, Goonie, and we are back with another win. Another win, three wins in a row. We scored three goals in a game today, two in one half as well. So some great positives that we saw today, but by no means was it easy. Let's start before this game. We're hovering above the relegation zone and needed a win way more than what we did. Fortunately, we were not able to give it to them. So you get me? We won at our own benefit. We need to call out of this 10th place mud, which we are still in, by the way. But unlucky for Leicester, it's not looking good for them for their, you know, fight to stay in the Premier League. A loss today really is going to hurt them and suck them further in to the relegation scrap. But before I get into the content, people, make sure you do these things for me. We're still on that road to 20k, but help us get to 17 before we get to that 20k because that's what you've got to do. 17 comes before 20, so we need to get to 17. So smash that subscribe button, help us get to 17k. Leave your thoughts down there in the comments. As usual, I will be going through them. I will respond to as many as possible and give the video a thumbs up. Get us up in the algorithm. Chelsea had to travel to the Midlands to face Leicester with the King Power Stadium in a very important Premier League game for both clubs. Chelsea, we're just languishing in this 10th place position currently. We need to get ourselves out. This win has not got us out there, but slowly but surely, as long as we keep getting wins like I have previously been saying in previous videos, I don't care how the wins come. Just make sure we get three points. And Graham Potter has put in three in a row. One against Leeds, obviously the big one against Dortmund, and today away to Leicester. An away game that is not too easy. Like I said, a relegation threat in Leicester side. They have got a lot to fight for. But how did we line up today? Let's start off with the person that with the Chelsea squad. So, Kepa started in goal. We went with the back three today of Koulibaly, Kukurella and Wesley Fofana. To those of you that knew before this game, I did want Badia Shile to step back into the lineup. I felt like, obviously, because he's not been selected for the further rounds of the Champions League, he hasn't really put in a foot wrong for the Premier League. So I thought, why are we going to punish this guy? Kukurella, yes, I get it. I understand. Things work on merit sometimes. And with the performance that Kukurella put in um, against uh, Borussia Dortmund, obviously his best performance in the Chelsea shirt, I understood to reward him, but it's a very good selection problem to have. He went in with Kukurella. Then we went with the wing-back selection of Ben Chilwell and Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Rhys James, as we know, was suffering from an illness. Thank goodness it's not an injury, so we hope Rhys James recovers quickly, but Ruben Loftus-Cheek stepped in. And then we had the midfield pivot of Enzo and Kovacic. Kovacic had the armband as well again today. And then we had the front three of João Felix, Havertz and Mudrik. Now, with that lineup, I wasn't too disappointed with all things considered. Uh, it's like I said, the Badia Shile, Kukurele thing, good selection problem to have both of them off the back of good form anyway. So we're going to be good whichever one started. On that right side, understandable. No Aspiliqueta, no Reese James. Ruben's the only one that can go there. Um, but I would, again, I would have liked to see that midfield pivot of Enzo and, and Zakaria. I don't understand why Potter's not using this guy. Maybe he just doesn't think he's good enough. I don't know. I've got no idea. But it would be good to see that pivot. Not to say that the pivot today didn't work well at times, but we still did see the vulnerability. But we're going to get straight into the game. Chelsea, we started off very well. We started off bright once again, focusing a lot of our play down, down the wing, stretching Leicester out wide. Um, ben Chilwell being central to all of that, yet again in a position that he's comfortable in. Um, I felt that we were controlling the game pretty well, man, that nil-nil. Um, it looked like we, we were knocking on the door. We started early. We knocked on the door very early with Leicester. We did create chances. Um, João Felix looking quite lively. Lucky to get away unharmed in terms of injury. I've got to speak about the referee today. The referee today was diabolical. Leicester should have finished today's game with about eight or nine men. Yeah, I know fires went off. But boy, he should have been one of maybe even three to go off. I mean, how Ricardo stayed on the pitch, I don't know. How Amati stayed on the pitch, I'm not too sure. But the Premier League, one of the most entertaining leagues in the world. But just some of the worst officiating that you've seen, man. Horrible. But 
Fortunately, Felix did not have an injury that required for him to come off. He was still able to play. He was able to run it off. But once again, looking lively in this game uh, alongside Kai Havertz and Mudrik as well. Mudrik, I've got to say, had a better game. The rivals were begging for the 007 team to happen, but he got his assist today. I'm fortunate to have a goal disallowed. And before people get onto Mudrik and try and clown my brother, yeah? He was definitely time-wasted with that celebration. I think he knew it was offside, but he just wanted to, you get me, burn the minutes. Because at that time, it was still 2-1, and Leicester were getting into the game. But Mudrik was playing well. But Leicester, again, we went there We went there to attack. Fair play to Leicester. They didn't sit back the entire game. They did bring it to us as well. But for us, we definitely, our, our aim was to get our full backs as far forward, sorry, our wing backs as far forward as possible and to really just get our attack and our midfield into the game. Enzo today, I thought was brilliant. I thought he was really, really good today. In terms of ball progression, in terms of interception as well, um, obviously he got that lovely assist for Kai Havertz. I thought he had a really good game. But our first goal was something of beauty and the irony of the player who was getting booed by his previous home fans. Obviously, Ben Chilwell has a history with Leicester Football Club, but what a finish that was. First time volley into the bottom corner. I didn't even know that it had gone in. I thought it hit the side netting. Took me a minute to know that Ben had scored the goal, but what a goal that was. But in typical Chelsea fashion, I can't celebrate goals straight away, man, because I have this PTSD of, you know, disallowed goals and, you know, especially goals as nice as that just being disallowed for Chelsea. It's just been our luck, hasn't it? But it wasn't disallowed. Brilliant goal from uh, Ben Chilwell. I absolutely loved the celebration. Been getting booed all until that point. And he went over to the fans. What are you saying now? What are you saying now? You get me? So hold that, Leicester fans. But... Listen, man, Leicester didn't go into their shell. They very much got into the game. Their counter-pressing was brilliant. I'm not going to lie at times. They really stifled us and kept us in our own half, really pinned us back. Something that I don't like to see us do, absorbing too much pressure. But Leicester, uh, through James Madison, uh, Dewsbury Hall as well, getting very much involved in the game. And Pats and Dakar, obviously, with that absolute screamer. But I've got to say, yeah, with a goal like that, I can't really blame Kepa. The power, the precision... Of, of where Daka put that, it was a great finisher. That was 1-1. One, one. But at that point, we were giving away silly little fouls. You know, um, Cucurella, who again, I felt had a decent game today, started off really well. Um, I'm really encouraged by his defending. He's, he's very aggressive. He's very much defends on his front foot, which does have its risks. But in a back three, you can sort of compensate for that. You've got two other centre-backs in behind you in case you get caught in behind. And the other two as well, Wesley Fofana, considering as well, going back to his home ground, I thought he was pretty solid. Um, Koulibaly, as we've been saying from the beginning of the season, although I did lose faith in the player and there's still a lot more that he's got to show me, but that central centre-back role, you can see how much he's really benefiting from it. You know, he's got the technique to be playing the passes. Also as well, just driving out of the heart of the defence with that ball. How many times did we see him initiate attacks with that ball? Looking a lot more confident as well, making less mistakes. Giving away, not giving away as much fouls, especially in the dangerous areas as well. Um... But we did, we did at times look shaky. I'm not going to lie to you. Leicester did put the pressure on us. They did look shaky. But we did look shaky. Giving away free kicks in dangerous places. And when you've got a set-piece specialist like James Madison on the pitch, it's never really wise to do that. But um, Leicester, they were fighting. They, the, their fans can be proud of some of their performance. Obviously, they were lucky to keep 11 men for as long as they did. But Chelsea, we did get back into the game. Um, the second goal was stuff of beauty. Enzo Fernandez, what an assist. What an assist that was. Just scoops the ball over the top to find Kai Havertz, who didn't even let the ball bounce. And it was really like a deft, smart touch to lob the goalkeeper. I've got to give Kai Havertz his, his props. Following on from the form that we saw against Borussia Dortmund, I thought Kai Havertz yet again today was good. But yet again, Leicester still getting back into that game, still getting through that midfield early. This is why I am saying this pivot of Enzo and Kovacic, I can't really lean on it too much when we're playing against better quality because we might get opened up time and time again. Leicester were doing that. Leicester were getting through us. Leicester were piling on a lot of pressure. They were getting a lot of corners. Um, but we were dealing with them well. Um, I think our defence done they done. Brilliant. Brilliant today. Um, everybody, everybody done their bit. Everyone done their bit from an aerial perspective. We were getting the headers out of the box, getting the balls out. Even when we was just being trapped by their by, by their counter pressing, we still kept our heads defended well. There was a squeaky bum time moment at 2-1 though, where Leicester definitely could have equalised. Two moments actually. 
Dewsbury Hall, a ball came in for him. He was in no man's land in the box. If he had got a better connection than he did, it definitely would have been 2-2 at that point. Maybe it would have been a different game. Also as well, their centre-back, I forget his name, had another opportunity in the box. Hit it straight at Conor Gallagher, who, thank goodness, excellent positioning, by the way. Uh, Gallagher, who did come on for Xiao Felix. I'm not too sure if it was a precaution because of the challenge he took, but... Brilliant defensive awareness to be on the line and deal with that once again at 2-1 could have been a game changer. But Chelsea, you know, we, we did hit them on the counter-attack. We were lethal. We had a couple of, we had a goal um, disallowed. Mudrick, unfortunate for him, he had a decent performance. Definitely one of his better performances today. Looked very confident, playing one touch through balls here and there, uh, making good decisions on the dribble. His passing was 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 a lot more on point today. Still a lot more room for improvement, I'm not going to lie, but I was impressed with what I saw from him today. Although the goal was disallowed, still done well to take it. Good positioning, but was just a little bit offside. Mudrick's pace is absolutely frightening, absolutely frightening, and I'm excited to see his development in this squad, which is why I'm really pushing for him to be starting games. Obviously, this guy's got a long-term future at the club, so let's involve him. Games like today, brilliant for us to see. Um, good performance from Mudrik. Also got his assist as well. Got his assist for a beautiful goal from, from Mateo Kovacic. Kai Havertz receives that ball, gets into good space yet again, Kai. Just a master at finding space. Gets into good space on that right side. Has the option of Conor Gallagher, who's driving through the middle and asking for the ball. He could have actually scored. But he decides to go to the back post, where he had two options. He had Mudrik. Granted, the ball was slightly overhit in terms of the chip, but Mudrik got a decent header on it to lay off for Kovacic, who hit it first time with some Kung Fu volley, man. Went through the middle of the goal. Got goalkeeper, unfortunate not to get it, but just too much power. That's all it needed. It just needed a whack straight into the goal. That's what Kovacic did. 3-1. That's really all she wrote, man. That is all she wrote. Chelsea were just cruising at this point. Leicester, obviously, with the yellow card, Fayez, um get sent off. I think it was the second yellow he got sent off for. And rightly so, man. But listen, Graham Potter, fair play to you. It's still not enough for me to be saying, oh, yeah, 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 we've got to keep him in. I'm, I am not too short-sighted like that. I'm not too fickle like that. I still need to see more. There's a lot that needs to be done. I'm not worried about the 40-point mark, people. I never was. Every time I brought it up, obviously, it's through banter and it's through anger at times. But really, I knew we was going to hit that 40-point mark. Are you crazy? But it's good to see form is coming back, confidence is coming back. Ever since we've reverted to that 3-4-3 three, three or the back five, whatever you want to call it, um, we have looked a lot better. We've won every single game since we've, we've done that. We've only conceded one goal as well. So one goal conceded in three games. Also a good defensive record. Something also to talk about. I'm, I'm, I want the clean sheets. I want to bring the clean sheets back. But it's looking positive. Graham Potter again, I think he got the tactics uh, spot on. Considering what he had available to him, I thought he'd done a good job today. So well done, Graham Potter. Credit where it's due. Credit where it's due. Um, and yeah, you know, up the Chelsea. Let's keep this coming. I wonder who's our next fixture. Let me have a look. Let me have a quick check. Everton next week in the Premier League, we're going to be at home. Another must-win fixture. Look, so the next several games, we've got Everton at home, Aston Villa at home, Liverpool at home as well. Um, Wolves away. Honestly speaking, I think that out of those next four games, I reckon we can get nine out of 12 points. I think we should be beating Everton. We should be beating Aston Villa. Yeah, we might draw... No, I'm, well, sorry, 10, 10 out of 12. Sorry, not, not nine, 10 out of 12. We, we, at bare minimum, I want a draw with Liverpool, but we should be beating them, in my, in my opinion. If we win those next two games, I think we should be beating Liverpool. Wolves away as well, I think we should be beating them. So, an opportunity again to just to just build on these positive runs, but in terms of personnel today, uh, players that... Yeah, let's talk about individual performances before I go. Kepa, for me, had an absolute shocker at times today. Made some decent saves, don't get me wrong. Do not get me wrong. But it's like I said to you, this is why long term I cannot trust this goalkeeper. When that lack of confidence creeps in, he doesn't always get over it and he does get shaky. Not dealing with aerial balls properly. We know that's not really been a strong point, but he has improved recently. But today I saw a bit of regression. Um, we, we saw a shot of his confidence, but hopefully he can get over that quick enough. Hopefully the three points is enough for him to forget about the performance today and to just go on and to maintain uh, you know, better form than, than what we saw today for sure. 
I thought the back three were good. At times, we did look a bit shaky. You know, Leicester, you know, committing numbers forward, our positioning a bit off at times, leaving players in the boxing positions where we perhaps shouldn't be leaving them. Uh, the wing-back play, I thought, was very good today. I thought, um, props to Loftus-Cheek. I thought he'd done what he could. Didn't really stand out like that, but I still think he was solid. Ben Chilwell, for me, excellent. As usual, an absolute master at that position and they show nothing less in those last three games. Also, would have done excellent to get that job on the um, inverted flank for him on his on his left foot. Felt beautiful for him. What a finish that was. So, well done, Ben Chilwell. In terms of the pivot today, Kovar and Enzo, they worked their socks up. Absolutely. Um, Enzo with the assist. Great assist. Kovacic really put in that work. Great goal as well. Great goal. So, Two key defining moments coming from both of our midfielders today. It's good to see a relationship is being built there. But long term, I still have my concerns. But for today, both of them, I thought they were great and were duly rewarded for their performances. One with an assist, one with a goal. Front three today, I thought Kai Havertz was, was good today. Um, got his goal as well. Took it very well. A very deft finish. Do you know what I mean? A very smart finish. Um, I thought Mudrik done good as well. Got his assist. Um, I also saw um, Jao Felix when he was on the pitch, he'd done all right. Conor Gallagher, when he came on to replace Jao Felix, I thought he'd done well. I'm not going to lie to you. Was really getting involved in the midfield battles, was really, you know, trying to win that ball high up in the pitch and trying to start the, um, initiate the attacks. Um, I thought he was good defensively, put his work in, like I said, cleared that ball off the line. So... Overall, you know, at times we definitely did get away with it, but we showed resilience. We showed resilience. How many times at 1-1 or when team score, we're just not able to get that other goal? We don't look like we've got it in us to get it. Today we showed fight, desire. We got the result that we needed. Yes, we're still in 10th place, but as long as we keep getting these positive results, surely, slowly but surely, we'll be climbing out of there into more positive positions. But people, like I said, let me know down there in the comments. Smash that subscribe button on our road to 20k. Up the Chels, three points, on to the next, get in.